Hey guys, it's me, uh, Will Chandler, handle a Guardian Fury on YouTube. And uh, I guess it's probably what would be called the rant video that I kind of wanted to do. I It seems like everyone in their, in their brother has uh, addressed uh, this issue, and that is of the Kingdom Hall crashes and the cart crashes and I watched a video the other day um, by a kid, ex-Jehovah's Witness. I don't know if he's a kid or not, but sounds kind of young. But And I guess he's an atheist now, which is very common for those that come out of the Jehovah's Witness cult. And in one breath, he's praising, he had some clips of some people doing Kingdom Hall crashes. In one breath, he's praising the guy or in the others, the other people, all the crashers, and saying, well, they have guts, I, I could never have the guts to do this, and giving him credit, and then in the next breath says how horrible of an idea it is, and that, oh man, this is you know not going to help anybody, and then he go, goes back to talking about himself, how he doesn't have, he could never do something like a, a Kingdom Hall crash or a cart crash, because he he just didn't have the personality type for it like he could he just he couldn't ever do it and i find that it seems like there's i always hear the comments uh in, in the videos or the comments down below about the videos where the people say yeah there's there's a better way this isn't the way blah 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 they never offer a solution though they never, they never give an alternative view on it. They never say, hey, I don't quite agree with this crash style, but here's an idea. So they're just trashing an idea, saying, oh, this is horrible. But they don't give any options of what's, what to do is better. And it, it kind of irks me a little bit because I look at it and I'm thinking, well... Yeah, you're saying you're the personality type that would never have the balls to go and do a cart crash or a Kingdom Hall crash. And then he talks about how, oh, it must feel great. This guy must feel awesome. It must be a great high to just stick your finger in the eye of these Jehovah's Witnesses. So he's only seeing it from the self-satisfying perspective. That's the only thing he sees. All, a lot of these other people see. They only see, well, this person's doing it for personal gain because they want to feel good because they want to go in there and make a point and just to poke their finger in, 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 some, in the watchtower's eye and it's all about themselves. That's, again, in my opinion, again, opinion, not stated as fact like all these others, my opinion is that that is cult programming coming back to bite you again. Because not everyone's the same. Someone like myself, those little seeds that were planted, I returned, I did return visits to people out in the field ministry to help me get some of those little seeds planted, to help me see the light, see the truth. Not a new light, the light that the Jehovah's Witnesses is a cult. <sighs> anyway. So, I just wish people would stop and think for a second and realize there's a couple other options. Try to think of things from different angles. Don't think of things the Jehovah's Witness way. Come up with an idea, one possibility, one narrative. Come up with one narrative and then apply it as true for everyone. I got to tell you, I've, I've gone and I've talked to, I haven't recorded anything, but I've gone and talked to Jehovah's Witnesses. I've seeked them out. I've gone to the, the Kingdom Hall many times uh, over the last few months and talked to a few elders and just tried to plant seeds. Now, I wasn't interrupting a meeting or anything. I went before field service, and like I, I discussed like you know Jesus not being their Messiah and a lot of other things, and it got to the point where I'd have a small crowd of Jehovah's Witnesses around me, and the elders started kind of giving me the, the nudge that I wasn't welcome to come back, basically, I didn't push it far enough to where they said I'm not welcome back, but they could definitely sense trouble because they weren't able to answer things biblically 
And here I was giving people a new perspective of ways to look at things and proving it biblically that some of what the Jehovah's Witnesses print is false. Now, did I, did I do that for myself? No, I didn't. I'll, I'll patently deny saying that I did that for myself. I did it because I want to help people out of the cult. If I can plant a seed that a year later, 10 years later, 20 years later, turns into something that wakes someone up, then it's worth it. And you got to look again at personality types. If you're, a, if you're a coward, or if you just are so against conflict that you would never do something like a car crash or, or a kingdom hall crash, if you're that patently against it because of your personal makeup, then don't apply that to everyone else. Like, I'm not like everyone else. I realize that. I've had to realize that in life to, to have a quality life. <laughs> like, not everyone's like me. Not everyone's going to be as blunt as me sometimes. And I have a lot of times considered someone a coward when it wasn't warranted. But when someone says, attack someone else's idea, number one, attacks their idea. Number two, doesn't give a, a different solution. And then ascribes, number three, ascribes their motives of being selfish, then I would say that that person might be a misinformed coward. Now, maybe I'm doing the same thing they are. I'm reacting, and maybe that's not the good, a good thing, right? So maybe I look at it a little different. So if that's my gut reaction, okay, that's my gut first reaction to think, hey, you're a coward. But in life, I've learned that that gut reaction, or not gut reaction, maybe that initial reaction, because it ruffles, uh, it ruffles me a little bit, I realize that it doesn't mean someone's a coward. They might just really not like conflict. And in one of my previous videos, I mentioned before also that the only reason atrocities have happened throughout history is because good men did nothing. All right, That doesn't mean they were cowards. It's just that most of the population will not rise up until things get to such a critical mass, such a horrible state, that it's either rise up or die, or they're, you know, rise up or your kids will die. That's what I see happening in the ex Jehovah's Witness community. We have we got that critical mass that's not hit yet. You have some people that are warriors and for justice and that will not stand by and do nothing. They are not the good men doing nothing. They are the good men and women doing something, trying to reach people. And yes, they might not reach the people, some of the people, or might, might not reach most of the people, but there's a pretty good chance if there's someone like me sitting in that hall, like I was, I would have loved to have had that happen. I would have loved to have a new thing to look up and to think of. I did it on my own back in 95. There were no resources. It took a year's worth of solid study and many hours to finally realize, to fully realize that the Jehovah's Witnesses was, was not a true religion, to realize that it was false. And it was many years later before I realized it was a cult. And another note that I wanted to touch on is you look at the suffragettes, vote, the women that wanted to vote back in the early, what was it, 1920s, I think? Something like that. And they were out there marching out in people's faces, giving, getting out their message, right? What was the reaction of a lot of people? And what's still the reaction of a lot of men today? Do they think that women are equals? Or do a lot of men still end up beating women and trying to control them and manipulate them? Uh, you still got a huge amount of people in this country... And we're, you know, so uh, supposedly we're, you know, advanced. And we still have a huge amount of issues with, with women's rights and women's equality. It's come miles, but there's still those people that haven't gotten there yet. So compare that to the Watchtower. Should, should the, the suffragettes of the Watchtower just sit, sit down and shut up and never go 
go out there and get their message out in protests? Or should they try? Look at the civil rights movement. Look how many people were telling Dr. King, hey, you're, you're doing this wrong or that's not the right way. And look at the fruits that it bore. So I have to patently say that you can't just write it off, these Kingdom Hall crashes and car crashes. It frustrates me to see people looking at things again in only one way and not looking at what the possibilities are. Don't come up with a narrative in your head and then believe it. That is what the Watchtower did to you and is still doing to people. They, brought, they made up a narrative because it wasn't based on fact and got people to believe it. And that's what I see a lot of people doing on YouTube. So think outside the box, all right? My, my first reaction of saying, well, if you're against it or if you're calling it out and then not giving a solution, you're, you're a coward. That's wrong. I realize that. But that's just it. You have to have the critical thinking ability to check yourself and look at things from different angles. That's going to, one, help you to realize that maybe it's not a bad thing to protest. I mean, look at throughout history in the last 120 years and see where protests have gotten people. All the, all the opposers saying, don't do this, don't do that. And look what came of it. And then if you're able to see things from other perspectives, especially if you're a leader, and this is one thing that came in, God, it was vital in the military to, to be a leader that could see things from different eyes, to be able to, to talk to your men and get different perspectives on something, you're not always going to have the right idea. By bringing everyone's ideas together, we do this in mission planning. You, you might be looking at, well, we got to hit this target over here. Well, this way looks right. But then I would make sure, me and the, the teams I was with, the guys I was with, the officers, the NCOIC, everyone that was in leadership would get everyone together and we would all kind of go over it. Anyone would add input because the more minds you have at it, the more people you have looking at something from a different perspective, that's the better odds you're going to have. And I can tell you for a fact that that's, what has, that's part of what kept me alive. So I know that's not going to be an everyday American example, but it's an example of how not just sticking to your own thinking, but trying to see things through other people's eyes and what the possibilities might be. Don't just patently put a motive on someone and then believe it. Do some research. Because also on a video I just watched uh, yesterday, there was a guy talking about this and he was like ascribing some other stuff saying, oh, well, that guy wasn't an elder because of this and that. And he said this and he said that. Well, if he actually knew what he was talking about, he would have realized he was 100% wrong. If he actually had done research on who these people were and what they had done, he would realize a lot of his assumptions were 180 degrees of what he thought. Complete opposite. And so I just wanted to rant about that and just, just encourage everyone out there to please check yourself. Look at your instincts. Check them. Ask other people for input. I'm always asking people, hey, I, like I'm sure some of my friends get tired of it, especially outside the military. It's not as a common thing I found out in civilian life, but every friend I've had, I've asked. I've said, hey, is there any like character flaws or something I'm doing? Every few months, I'll ask the question like, hey, is like, is there anything, any advice you have for me or any thoughts or because how do we, how do we advance as humans? How do we advance as people? How does our path get brighter, right? Look like in, in Proverbs 8. How does it your path gets brighter? The path of the wise man. You got to look for ways to better yourself. And one of the, you have to get input from other people to really do that, in my opinion. All right? it's, it's hard to, to correctly um, Look at yourself sometimes in in a in a unbiased way because you're 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 you right. It's kind of hard not to be biased to yourself. Anyway, well that's all I had for today, and uh, hope you all have a good one. Later.